This is a really interesting tact here. Traditionally, tech companies have said if you're leaving the expensive Bay Area for a cheaper part of the country, your pay will be adjusted down. Uh, you're saying they'll be paid the same. How did you come to this decision? Sure, that's right. So first, hi, thanks for having me. Um, we had that original policy as well, but it had some obvious flaws, which is, first of all, there are so many decisions, personal decisions that one might make in their life that affect um, their quality and cost of living, such as whether to have a family, whether to rent or own, what part of the city to live in, and of course, which city you live in. And so there's so many variables at play here. We figured the most fair thing to do is to simply pay at the top of the market and pay for performance and pay for the role. And we think this will be an advantage for both recruiting and just simplify, I think, a lot of what I would call like garbage in, garbage out, you know, math that we were trying to do. So how many employees do you think will take you up on this offer and move away from headquarters to other parts of the country? And how do you expect that to impact your sort of talent redistribution, if you will? It's a great question. And if I'm being completely honest, we don't know. We've surveyed our employees and found that only a small percentage like need to be in the office. But many, um, the vast majority, would like to be in the office sometime, but would also like the freedom in their life. And just speaking from my own experience, I think my own feelings have evolved on this. I think there's um, pros and cons to working from home and working remotely that we're still learning. And so the core of our approach is to be flexible and let people make these decisions, let teams maybe experiment with different approaches. And I'm as curious as you are to see how the, the dust will settle when all of this is over. So what does a return to work look like for you when we get to some sort of normal or new normal? Well, so the first question is, is it legal to open our offices, right? G given the various um, restrictions in, in different cities. So we're not even there yet. And then is it practically safe to open our offices. And then the big question is, do we as employees feel comfortable being in our offices? I, I think we don't yet know the, you know, how, how our habits have changed, the, the PTSD of, you know, being afraid of just being around people generally is going to affect things. So I think no matter what the law says, um, there's gonna be a, a matter of kind of practicality that will require us to kind of inch our way in and, and Feel, feel our way as we go. Now, we're just six days away from the election, and I know that you have spent many, many years trying to find the right balance of free speech and moderation on your platform. As we get closer to the election, I know you've made some moves over the last uh, several months, for example, banning um, the subreddit, the Donald, for example. How do you feel about the community that you've created with now days to go? You know, we've spent the last not just few months, but a um, number of years refining our policies, um, learning from all of the lessons uh, that, that we've seen over the last couple of years. You know, some we've learned the hard way, um, some we can, you know, have a better sense of what the challenges might be going forward. So based on everything that we've learned and that we know, we feel that we're very well prepared for, you know, uh, the, the kind of various scenarios that may come up over the next week. Um, but that said, we are watching things very closely. Our communities are watching things very closely. We just sent out a message to our moderators, bringing hopefully them all in on the same page, um, because really we're all, you know, we're all in this together. And I think that's one of the things that um, actually makes Reddit special is that we, our moderators and our users are all sharing this collective space together. Meantime, some of your Silicon Valley peers, Jack Dorsey, Mark Zuckerberg, Sundar Pichai, were in the hot seat before Congress today about how they're managing this stuff on their platforms. Take a listen to this heated exchange between Senator Ted Cruz and Jack Dorsey. Mr. Dorsey, does Twitter have the ability to influence elections? No. You don't believe Twitter has any ability to influence elections? No, we are one part of a broad spectrum of communication channels that people have. So you're testifying to this committee right now that, that, that Twitter, when it silences people, when it censors people, when it blocks political speech, 
that has no impact on elections? People, people have choice of other communication channels with which. Not if, not if they don't hear information. If you don't think you have the power to influence elections, why do you block anything? Uh, well, we have policies that are focused on making sure that more voices on the platform are possible. We see a lot of abuse and harassment, which ends up silencing people and having them leave from the platform. Steve, what's your reaction to that exchange as one of the competing platforms? So I think the, the last thing that Jack said is one of the points that we feel very strongly uh, about as well, which is there is there are multiple types of speech. And this is one of the things that we spend a lot of time thinking about at Reddit. There's the idea of free speech and open expression, which we feel very strongly about. And there's this other idea that some speech causes other people to feel unsafe and to not speak or to you know, not feel welcome on our platform. And so it's easy, I think, to talk about hypotheticals when it comes to things like speech. Um, but for us, these are very real trade-offs. And so at Reddit, we have our content policies you know, that, that ban things like harassment and bullying and hate and calls to violence. Um, but our communities also have their own rules and their own standards of behavior. And we support them in enforcing those rules, however strict they may be. Because the reality is, in any of these conversations, context is really important and nuance is really important. And one of the things that is unique about Reddit is that our users and moderators all play a critical role in making these difficult decisions. Do you think that platforms like Twitter, like Reddit, have the power to influence elections? And do you think that Section 230, because of the power of these platforms, should be reformed? So the first part of your question, I think it really applies to all media companies. Um, and not just media companies, but all media and where people get their information and news. And so I think the platforms play a role in that. Um, Section 230 is a critical law that allows platforms like Reddit and the other platforms to even exist. Without Section 230, we would be forced to one of two extremes. One version is where we are ex incredibly strict on moderation and very, very limiting, which is what some policymakers do want. The other version is there's no moderation at all and anything goes, which is what other policymakers want. And so the challenge with Section 230 and the frustration that I have watching the, the hearings today is that it's not even clear what the policymakers want. It's just that they're upset with the status quo in, in opposite directions. And so at, at, the, at the moment, Section 230 allows platforms like Reddit to exist in between these extremes and hopefully make good decisions and, you know, over the long term, I think, act in the best interest of not just our community, but people generally.